latest read survey, over 80% of Canadians believe it should be. And even Health Minister Alan Rock says that he will consider the idea. The drug can increase appetite, it can suppress nausea in patients who are fighting AIDS or perhaps undergoing chemotherapy. Some doctors who think their patients should have access to marijuana got together in Ottawa last night to talk about it. We're joined now by one of them, Dr. Don Kilby. One of his patients was recently arrested for growing marijuana. And Eugene Oscapella, he's an Ottawa lawyer who's been fighting for the decriminalization of marijuana. He was also at the meeting. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Dr. Kilby, I want to start with you first of all. Were you able to figure out a system last night for helping patients who need marijuana? Well, we got together to, uh, to discuss options that might be available to us, and I think we're at a point where we'd like to go out and uh, have a little bit more consultation and arrive at some sort of consensus among uh, other providers of uh, health care and, and maybe some people in the, in the legal profession to uh, to help us come with uh, some solution, some positive solution that we can bring forward. But what were you taking into consideration last night? For example, how the marijuana would be grown, federally supervised, that sort of thing? Um, I don't, need, don't even, can't even say that we got into that type of details. I think what we were looking at is the problem um, and what possibilities might exist uh, to get around the problem. Um, in a timely fashion that will be of most uh, immediate benefit to our patients. But Mr. Oscapella, the health minister, Alan Rock, has said that he's willing to consider evidence that anyone outside the government can put forward as to the therapeutic value of marijuana. Do you think this group is able to do that? Well, there's, there's, a, there's ample evidence, but I mean, the, the, the whole argument that we have to put forward evidence is a bit absurd because there was never any evidence put forward to, to criminalize marijuana in the first place. And now all of a sudden we have people running around saying, well, we need evidence to show that it shouldn't be criminal. Uh, if you look to the history of our marijuana laws, there was never any, any rational justification for criminalizing the, the substance in the first place. So our, our position, the Canadian Foundation for Drug Policy, has argued that, uh, that marijuana should not be a criminal offense for, for an adult to possess it. Uh, and, and of course that would uh, take care, that would resolve the, uh, the medical marijuana issue right there and then. But I don't think, well I shouldn't say I don't think, I don't know if that would fly by the health minister or not. Can you present an argument, do you think, and evidence to him still that would prove it's essential that it has some therapeutic value? Well, I mean, uh, Dr. Kilby can speak directly of that, but uh, certainly from the evidence I've read, from the, the literature I've read, there's, uh, there seems to be very clear evidence that marijuana can have medical benefits in, in some circumstances. And I'll be, I'll be trying to arrange a meeting with the health minister and with the attorney general and the solicitor general of Canada to discuss these issues. Uh, Dr. Kilby, THC is available, is it not, now in pill form? Is that not a, a substitute for marijuana? Well, in, in fact, we have enough uh, medical evidence that the active ingredient of marijuana is of therapeutic benefit. Um, and what we're looking at here is to get that same uh, benefit to a patient who cannot digest the pills. Uh, most other medications have uh, different uh, methods of administration. Um, it, with THC, we only have the pill form that, uh, that's available. And what we're asking for is to have the inhaled form of the active ingredient available through the use of marijuana. I see. So for someone who can't keep the pill down, they need Absolutely. to be able to, to smoke it. Absolutely. Uh, what have you seen in your practice? What effect does it have and, and who qualifies for it? Well, in, in my practice of patients uh, who have cancer, who have advanced AIDS, what we see are patients who are in chemotherapy or who have to take a number of toxic medications per day that are very difficult to absorb through the stomach and difficult to digest. And when you're vomiting um, uh, several times a day and unable to keep this medication down, yeah, some people derive a lot of benefit from being able to smoke the marijuana, therefore they don't have to worry about the absorption, they don't have to worry about digesting this, and then that calms the nausea and also helps to stimulate the appetite. This, we always use this as a last recourse. There are other medications that we try, and no medication is perfect, and marijuana won't be perfect, but it does help many people. The problem being for many of these people is you say that, in fact, malnutrition becomes a serious health issue for them. They waste away, and they need to put weight on. Absolutely. We often say, you know, that the treatments often kill the patients, not the disease. And there's a little bit of truth to that when your treatments actually make you so sick that you can't sit down and have a meal with your family. Mr. Oscapella, what would a distribution system look like if this thing, you know, if it, if it comes to pass, if marijuana is approved for medical use, how would it be distributed? Who would uh, qualify? Would that be an issue just between a patient and a doctor? 
Well, it, it could easily be. A, I mean, our, again, I go back to our original position that marijuana, it should not be a criminal offense. If, however, we do have to, to abide by a, a medical system, then uh, or a system of distribution of medical marijuana, then it would seem to make sense to have it done um, uh, through consultations between physicians and, and, uh, and their patients. But uh, again, I go back to the original point that uh, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now if the government had acted intelligently on the marijuana laws in the first place. Dr. Kilby, what kind of system would you put in place then? Well, I mean, when we're talking about uh, therapeutic uses of marijuana, like any other medication, I would see a system that where a physician was able to prescribe marijuana and then what we have to look at is is some sort of delivery system for that marijuana um, I think that's what I'm interested in is, is the delivery system what would that what would that be well obviously whatever delivery system system we would put into place would have to meet the uh, the regulations that are already in place um, and there that's what we're trying to look at now is what what avenues might be available either through um, through pharmacists, through, uh, through delivery to physicians, through, you know, some system that would have enough uh, checks and balances in place to satisfy uh, regulators. All right, I want to thank you both for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, isn't that illegal? Well, you know, now, thanks to Proposition 215 in the state of California, doctors can prescribe ganja for certain illnesses. <laughs> you just go down the hall and see Cheryl. She'll hook you right up. I'll see you in a few weeks. Thanks, doctor. Okay. Hiya, doc. Why, Mr. Weinstein, what are you doing here? Well, is the glycoma still bothering you? Oh, no, no, no. The, that prescription you gave me definitely did the trick. It's just now I can't stop eating <laughs> Cheetos and Susie Q's. It's like oh, a whole thing. Oh, that's okay. Enhanced appetite is a typical side effect. We call it the munchies. Oh. Don't let it bother you. Just continue to take 12 huge bong hits three times a day. <laughs> I need to get my prescription refilled. Oh, not a problem. Jamal! Yeah, yeah. Smoke, smoke. <laughs> this is Jamal Wilkes Booth, our new in-house pharmacist. Jamal, give Mr. Wainwright his couple of eights. All right, all right. Well, you know, this right here is a hype lamb's bread. Hype lamb's bread. Potent. Yeah. yeah. No seeds, no stems. Right. That's right. Ah. Uh. Hey, yo, you know Blue Cross don't cover that. Yeah. You got to show me the money. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, ATM. Yeah, right ATM. Down right. Okay. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> hello, Dr. Redcard speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Spiegelman. Yes. Well, did you pack the bowl tightly? <laughs> you did. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Well, are you taking huge bong tokes or just little girly ones? <laughs> well, right. But if you remember to take your finger off the carb, you should be able to get some monster hit. Okay, Mr. Spiegelman, take care. I'm uh, here to pick up my prescription. <laughs> but you're still having trouble with your uh, cataracts? Uh, yeah, 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 loads of trouble. I need more... medicine. <laughs> Mr. Jenkins, don't you know it's legal now? No need to be so theatrically sneaky. Oh. Just oh. go see Jamal right down the hall. All right, then. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Cheerio. Uh, excuse me, Doctor. I'm here to pick up a prescription for uh, the Black Crows. Ah, yes. Well, you're going to want to see Jamal down the hall. I just hope you brought a van. It's a big shipment. Okay, thank you. <laughs> By the way, you're doing a great job here, sir. Hey, thanks, kid. All right. Hi. I'm one-time Academy Award winner Kevin Spacey. And I'm Spin Magazine's Artist of the Year, Beck Hansen. <laughs> and I'm the star of Home Improvement, Tim Allen. <laughs> Proposition 215 allows doctors to prescribe marijuana in the state of California. But just because something is legal doesn't make it right. You said it, Tim. Smoking weed is never acceptable even if you're going to see the animation festival at your local movie house. Kevin's right. Take a stand and say no to medically prescribed pot. Yes, and help us keep pot on the streets where it belongs. Thank you and good night. Good night.